as the sun slowly fades and sets in the west. <laughs> but seriously, it's uh, just beginning to get right to the corner of my roof, and pretty soon we'll be in shade. And if I remember right, we have a problem with this camera adapting to the light, but praise the Lord. Today, I have a problem adapting just to my emotions as they're dealing with the pain from the back that's gone out that ah, I probably should be laying on my back flat out resting and then you know doing leg lifts and strengthening and all that kind of stuff which I'm doing in between but one thing God gave us that is precious to us is emotions is that we treat our feelings of things like love and peace and joy as though they are so much more important than things like pain or hurting or sorrow or depression or or sadness and yet God gave them to us so there is a balance to knowing and recognizing the gift that God has given us of the ability to feel emotion to be able to when you're hurting and in pain to be saddened or sorrowful or depressed even because that causes us to turn our attention to change and to reach out instead of reaching inward and sometimes that means that we have to minister to our own emotions as the devotional says today we have to be in touch with our feelings but at the same time reach out to extend them in some other way to give them to God to share them in some way you know and for me, you know, I've always known that. Like, I'll tell my wife, I'll say, Honey, I don't feel good. <laughs> and it makes me feel better. You know, it's amazing, too. You, you hear when you take the moment to stop what you're doing because you're in pain, to lay down and to be a little more sensitive to the things around you. You recognize little things like birds singing. Even though there's cars in the background, noise, and all kinds of other things, somehow God makes your ears sensitized to different things. Your own heartbeat if you're in a lot of pain. Um, breath, sometimes. Sometimes sharp noises or loud noises. But in all these things, there's a way of appreciating them more so, even though they may at times rub on your nerves, as it were, you can turn that around to focus in on God, if you're willing. Minister to your emotions. Keep and protect me, O God, for in you I have found refuge, and in you do I put my trust and hide myself. Whenever you get into a lot of severe pain, then you want to throw the covers over your head and hide, as it were. You want to crawl back into the womb. You want to cocoon yourself. You want to kind of go into the fetal position and just pull back. And God says that in Him we can find our refuge. In Him we can hide ourselves. We can actually reach out and kind of send our spirit, as it were, our soul, our emotions to the place where God is, because God will hold our heart. God understands our feelings of hurt and pain when we're depressed or sad or, or even in darkest despair and thinking of thoughts of suicide or whatever it may be that you might be going through because of some great turmoil that you're in. God gave us feelings and it's all right to minister to your emotions or to the emotions of other people. Do something kind for yourself to keep your emotions healthy. Just don't be ruled by them. Treat yourself to a hot bath or a walk in the fresh air. Do what you need to get emotional release. If yesterday wore you out, get refreshed spiritually and emotionally before starting a new day. Find some time alone with God and listen to teaching or music tapes and refill your heart with the awareness of God's presence. For me, it was putting on this what is this 
Boy, when you're in pain, your brain goes kink. Putting on the, this wetsuit, you know, that I got in Jerusalem that uh, I bought 11 years ago. And I still have it. And it's still in good shape. And remembering the times that I was there. And being mindful of how God has kept and blessed me with little things that are very important to me that I enjoy. That he hasn't taken away or I haven't removed from my life, but that they've lasted all these years. You know, when I gave up my car just recently, that had been with me for quite a few years. <laughs> Put over 100,000 miles on it. You know, and it was a, a very fascinating car. You know, it was a Ford Focus wagon. And, and uh, it went through a lot. You know, it, it acted as a truck for me. It acted as a house at times it it was amazing and it traveled from Alaska to California and back oh I don't know maybe six or seven times or maybe four or five times and then it traveled all the way across Canada to from Alaska to uh, Massachusetts and it went from Massachusetts all the way to California and it's just pretty amazing you know just what that car could do you know, and I thank God for what it lasted, you know, and I'd still have it if I was able to work on cars here, but unfortunately we had to give it up. Praise the Lord. But when you're down and out, you need to have those little, what they call touchstones or those little things of remembrance. We call them in the Bible, Ebenezer's, stone of remembrance. The Eben, E-B-E-N, is uh, stone. That's what it means in Hebrew. And Nazar is to remember. So it's a stone to remember. Or because Hebrew is full of expressions as opposed to just simple words. You don't put a word together to make an expression. A word is an expression. So Ebenezer, or Ebenezer, as you may have heard it commonly called, is a stone of remembrance of what God has done. Because when stones were assembled together, they were built as an altar unto God to remind the children of Israel what God has done. And so there was always a thankfulness offering or a thank offering built upon or sacrificed upon these stones so the stones would be remembered. And there was always bloodshed. You know, the blood was shed and covered the stones. And, you know, you're a stone of remembrance, so to speak. You know, as God's going to give you a white stone with a new name on it. And in having those little remembrances, it's okay for you to have things like, you know, little goofy things in your house. That maybe it's a maybe it's a menorah, you know, who knows? <laughs> maybe it's a little locket, or maybe it's a Morgan David or, you know, a cross or a crucifix. You know, maybe it's a a peculiar picture or a sweatsuit. <laughs> maybe it's just the presence of the Lord that, you know, causes you to have a focal point for your faith, a token of remembrance that causes you to not think of that thing as being like an idol or something special or something that can induce some special feature or quality. Like, I know some people get carried away about these holy napkins or gold dust or goofy things, but those have no power in of themselves. But they only cause you to think about God, to focus in a direction that God wants you to go in. So, when you're hurting and down and out, you know, it's okay to take time to be still, back up, take time for yourself. Even as, at some point in time today, I'll do the same. I'll probably take a hot bath, like the devotional said, and take a nap. Try to strengthen my back for the next day. And try to lessen the pain each day. As pain is a way of humbling you, but it also has a way of pulling you back and slowing you down so you can walk with God as opposed to run. Even though we're told to run the race, it was meant to be a disciplined race, <laughs> meaning that you know you got a long ways to go, so you got to pace yourself. And pain helps you pace yourself. So today, if you're in pain and suffering like I am, then I pray the Lord bless you, you know, in some way that maybe, maybe it hurts a lot. Maybe it hurts a little. 
Maybe it's a hangnail or maybe it's a severe pain. <laughs> I've been in so much pain for so many years at different times that severe or lesser, you know, it doesn't matter. They're all painful, aren't they? They all you need to be taken to the Lord of Prayer so you can leave it there and then go about what it is that God would have you to do. Because if he wants you to just sit in his lap and be held, that might just be the place for you to be today. So don't be afraid to go there. <laughs> don't be afraid to be still and let God be God and you just be his child. Ooh.